I hope everyone can hear me okay. Good morning to you all anyway. Um, I have to say I was uh, slightly nervous when Pastor did ask me to, to share a word. Um, I haven't done it for some time and it uh, reminded me, I think the first time that um, I ever did this was back in 2008 and I was sharing a message of um, just people badging people and I thought it would be a great idea if I could use some visuals and what I decided to use in my infinite wisdom was uh, a guy who helped me. Um, I used about 10 squeezy bottles of paint and some throwaway overalls. And, um, and then I entrusted my six or seven year old daughter um, to, to squeeze as we went through about badging people. And, um, it didn't go well and uh, before I knew it uh, he had paint everywhere and uh, the, the, the worst thing was the fact that those overalls uh, they didn't keep the paint out and um, and the guy was a bit of a mess but hey ho we all learned don't we um I'm, I'm sharing what's on my heart um and what's what's on my heart is um prior to our first lockdown so if we go back to um uh, early 2020 um, and I, the, I, I think I'd had a couple of tough years um, I think things had been quite difficult we've been through lots of challenges as a family um, and what I found myself as we stepped into early 2020 was nothingness I I think everything I kind of lost it everything like um, food had lost its flavor a little bit um i had nothing to say i had nothing in the tank i made some notes that i kind of i felt completely burnt out i'd set myself to autopilot to zero um and i was beginning to feel like a complete indifference i knew i knew that i needed to do something about it but i just I just felt empty and, 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 and it made me think even more. If you can imagine a boxer in a ring and then you've got two scenarios, you've got one where maybe a boxer gets hit, he gets hit a number of times and he goes down on the deck and then he gets up and, uh, and, and he's kind of going back at the, the boxer saying, that didn't hurt, that, that didn't mean anything, you know, I'm coming for you. And then there's the other scenario where you get hit and hit and hit and then you get down and when you get back up you've got nothing to say you've got nothing to say um, and you find yourself in a you find yourself in a scenario um, when um, it, you know you, you you can't even find your way back to your ring your, your corner you know so I think that was pretty much where I was heading anyway so that's kind of painting a picture. So I can't blame any pandemic or anything like to what was going on. Um, it was just a reality that I felt really burnt out and alone. And, and um, yeah, I was struggling. I felt like I was drowning a little bit. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of where I was at. So then it made me think of, of some scriptures. Um, the first one, which I think that springs to mind is from Ecclesiastes in uh, uh, one uh, chapter two when it says everything's meaningless it's meaningless utterly meaningless everything is meaningless and that's pretty much how things felt for me you know um I, I'd, I'd hold a conversation and there was just no sense of anything for me um and if I, I kind of knew that if this carried on for me personally I had to kind of hit the stop button I think that what would spring to mind would be in Re uh, Revelation 3, verse 15, when it goes on to say that I know your deeds, that you are neither cold or hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So be, um, because you are lukewarm, uh, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. So it's, it's almost like God saying, I'm going to turn you over to yourself. And, and for me, that that couldn't happen i just i just thought of living life you know in silence and without god was just too much to bear really so i kind of knew i had to do something about it and i had been praying about it as well um 
that I needed to um, just get some help, really. Um, problem is, though, then we have a pandemic and a pandemic hits. Um, as an example, um, from a, um, what would you call it, a financial year, I'm a small trading business. And this second year of trading, I will have been shut eight months of my trading year. So no money coming in. Yes, there is government support, which I'm very grateful for. And it's helped to contribute towards the rent of my premises, my shop and what have you. But ultimately, we're by no means out of the woods. So I knew that um, I'm not sure what I could do about getting some help and knowing that I had kind of zero budget. And you know what, lo and behold, um, there's a guy that uh, used to come into the shop and we'd catch up every now and then. I've known him for a few years and he's what's known as um, um, a street chaplain in, in uh, Leighton. And, um, you know, we passed on prayers and, you know, spoken about people and, and what have you. He's a good guy. And he messaged me out of the blue and he said, look, um, you know, uh, counselling, how, how do you feel about, you know, hooking up with some counselling and I can put you in contact? And I thought, OK, so I, I did exactly that. I um, I made it. I literally did it straight away. Uh, it was like an email uh, someone. And then I had a response the same day from a doctor. Uh, well, he's a retired doctor. Right? And um, and we arranged to to chat. Um, and then what started with a zero budget uh, went on for 28 sessions. Can you believe, well, it just shows the glory of God, but for 28 sessions, I had um, the pleasure of being able to get some help, you know, and, and kind of um, try and get my life back kind of thing. Um, and with zero budget. So I give thanks and praise to God for that, really. This isn't new to me. I mean, I think we all go through life and we kind of uh, need to talk sometimes and get stuff out, especially from a dice perspective. Um, and, and I'd kind of been down this route before many years ago and I lost my brother. I kind of made a point to take a pause and take some time out. Um, but what I, I, I become guilty of is I'll allow myself to go so far and then, and then throw up smoke screens, you know, don't go any deeper or further. Um, and, and what I found myself doing probably about five or six sessions in was, I found myself um, uh, kind of making out everything was pink and fluffy. I was kind of um, spinning a few positive lines. Um, and, and, and anyway, I was doing this weekly at the time. And then the following week, um, instead of carrying on, I kind of, you know, said, look, can we stop this week? I, I kind of made excuses, if you like. I had to think and... and, and um, uh, and then when I come back to the table the following week, I said to him, I wonder whether you, where you was at with it. And do you think that maybe we were about done? And he said, yeah, exactly that. And I said, well, if I'm being truthful, um, this is the scenario. And I kind of shared the fact that uh, I was kind of chucking up smoke screens. And, um, and that was probably the best thing that I'd probably ever done, really, because... It just, uh, you know, we got real and we got honest and we started doing some work, which was which was great. Um, so, you know, you've got to be honest with yourself. And if you are thrown a line of, of help, then it's important that you um, that you grab it with both hands kind of thing. Um, so continuing on with Revelation, um, when I shared earlier about Revelation 315, about, you know, God turning you over to yourself and being lukewarm. The great side about, about it as well is if you go into Revelation 3, 19 to 21, it goes on to say, those, those who I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcome and sat down with my father on the phone on the throne um how amazing is that uh, to think that um that there is there is a way out there is an opportunity so i just i you know that blows me away to think that um that god is 
he, he's, he's there and he wants to help you. I know, and and it just proves the point that he has gone on to help me in many ways and and kind of lead me down this path. Um, moving on as well just without dwelling on that too much is I also knew that I had to do some homework um, on me as well as have this great opportunity to talk and kind of try and get my motor going if you like it's like um, being flatlined and when someone blasts you like that trying to get a pulse going um, I knew that I had to do some homework and I had to help myself as well um, and one of the things that really helped me was um, by trying to do different things. And uh, I'm not saying it's a different thing, but um, I grabbed a book I hadn't read for a while. And I, I used to love reading. And um, John Eldridge, who I particularly like, um, he's written some great books over the years. Um, and he wrote recently, wrote, I think it was last year, he wrote a book called Get Your Life Back. And not only did I get the book, I also downloaded his uh, pause app as well, which um, is a free app and, and you can um, decide whether you do a one minute, three minutes, five minutes or 10 minutes. And you literally just do that. You pause and you pray and you get some great background music and, uh, and, and you make some declarations as well. It gets you to do some declarations, which was I used to do in my man cave above the shop so I used to sit up in this man cave in the morning with a cup of tea before I opened up and I would I, would, I soon went from a minute because I thought that was fine to three minutes and before that I was 10 minutes and and you know happy to continue um just before I did my hoovering downstairs um and it was a great time to um just literally do that is to pause and to to reflect and to not get in the busyness of everything um, and to consider yourself in scenarios as well, you know. And I, I got an, ex, an excerpt from the book, very brief. Remember the book's called um, Get Your Life Back. And this is the thing that, that, that spoke to me. Um, and it's, if you can imagine, it's a scenario where he refers to people having lots of hits in life and loss for that matter as well. And he goes on to say, um, we often can't find... Uh, the more of God that we long for because we are looking um, with so little of ourselves. Too much of us has been left behind. Just as the assault on our attention keeps pushing us into the shallows so that we no longer hear deep calling unto deep. The pace of life rushes us past significant moments of disappointment and loss and in doing so continues the shallowfication of our souls. He's a wonderful writer, very gifted, um, and, and, and such depth. And I, and I would highly recommend like the, the if, if, if you do nothing else, but like the, the pause app, which is available free on, you know, whatever um, you, you can go, what store you can go on to. Um, but, and, and it's a great daily habit, but what this leads me on to is it was trying to get, uh, for me, some flavour back into my life, some disciplines um, and some joy, you know, and to start feeling a sense of like joy, you know, and just because there was a pandemic on. But remember, all of this happened way before that, you know. Um, so it, it encouraged me, which the book did uh, and the app, but to do other things. So it encouraged me to, to walk. I mean, I used to constantly walk to the to the, my, my, my shop in town which was a great way of setting myself up for the day but what I wasn't doing I was head down either listening to music or maybe listening to a word and I would just be straight to work you know and get a bit of fresh air and what have you but what it wasn't doing was getting me to stop and look around and appreciate what I was looking around you know you might be in a scenario where all you see is concrete walls and uh um you know not not, not allowed else so it's it, what it's encouraging you to do is to get outside get some fresh air get the first petrichor of the day which is that scent of fresh earth the freshness of the day um and just to enjoy nature you know to feel a bit of rain on your face um to just look at god's creation in a deeper way um 
look at trees, look at leaves, look at the different colours. And, um, and just that those things were just starting to defrost me. Um, the app, um, taking time to do that, taking time for me. Um, and yeah, just to get out in the open, spending time with the family um, and, and enjoying the time you have spent with the family, making the most of a, a lockdown, you know, which can be difficult for all of us, I know, but, you know, if you, if you can look at it in a different light and think, you know what, there's, there's a blessing here somewhere, which there often is. And the blessing is to spend time with those that you love, you know. Um, uh, well, and I did a self inventory uh, of my thoughts, looking back and reflecting on stuff. Um, part of the, I guess part of the issue, if I'm being brutally honest, is as a 20 year old, good looking 80s kind of guy, as you can imagine, um, I, I was at my dad's funeral and I made um, a crazy decision all by myself as well, which was but I wouldn't cry at my dad's funeral. It was complicated. Um, and, and it's kind of bitten me for years and, and probably part of the reason why I ended up here because it's almost as if I thought I could bypass, you know, the moment something got a bit deep or heavy, I could bypass it with either sucking it up and swallowing it and just imagine it didn't really happen. Um, all just digging in deep, you know, and hoping for the best. Um, and um, and that's not good for your soul, is it? You know, it really isn't good for your soul. And, and, I've, and as I've said, it's where that's can, where it can lead you to. Um, so I did a self inventory and, uh, and I kind of, you know, started looking where I've been, but where I wanted to go as well. Um, and I also slowly got back to God's word because um, I wasn't really, delving in much you know you could get my bible go <clears throat> if i'm being honest and that's not a good place to be in it was almost like um i just you know i didn't want in the mood for anything kind of thing so i knew that i needed to get back and get that um funny enough i saw in the week that bev shared and i, I looked at psalm 119 147 and the one thing that i took from that was i hope in your word lord and and i hadn't hoped in his word for some time so to 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 have that and feel that sense and made me realize that um that there is hope and I'm, and you know and it is there for me because i do sense it as well which is great um and the other thing as well that um getting back into god's word is i've been involved with the children's ministry and do you know what? Actually, there, there's times where I thought, oh, I'm not really in the mood today, you, you know, just because of where I was at, you know. But every time I've done it, I've really enjoyed it. And and as much as I've tried to be, to not waste my time and make the most of it with the children, I've actually really enjoyed it for me as much as them. And I, and I, and I think sometimes I've enjoyed it. Um, and there was one particular time when um, I had this great idea about um, having a bowl of flour. And if you got the questions wrong, you had to stick your head in flour. And obviously the, the children, you know, they couldn't wait to get their head in. And I kind of had this flower there thinking, you know, I can't push it to one side. And I got caught out by um, Prim and Timothy um, when they asked me a question and I'm terrible with names. And I knew that the answer was, like, if I looked down below, I'd have it. But I thought I couldn't do that. So I had to duck my head in and, and enjoy that flower, which I did. Um, but why I'm telling you that is one of the the um, characters that we were talking about and that I really started enjoying was Joshua. And, and Joshua, I mean, I've never really ever considered Joshua, and yet there's a whole book about him as well. And what a character, that guy, has truly inspired me back into life. He stirred me up, he stirred my soul a little bit. When I started delving and reading more about this guy, the actual book itself is a bit heavy in places in terms of um, like the wars and the battles and, you know, there's probably plenty of blood on his hands, but boy, did, did that God 
but did, did, did God use that guy? It was um, empowering, to, well, it, for me anyway. And, and it kind of made me think, you know, this is just me, by the way, that for me, he's like the James Bond of, of spies. He's the original James Bond because he was one of the 12 spies that went out there. And the reason I reflect on James Bond is most guys kind of, they like to kind of um, visualise that maybe they're either him or it's their way of, of kind of zoning out of what's ever going on in their world. And they love the, you know, the cars and everything else that goes with it. But this guy was a real, he's the real deal. He was the real original James Bond. I kind of caught that up in numbers 13, 1 to 16. Um, he also, again, forgive me, it's just me talking here. He's like the Forrest Gump of his day. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but boy, that guy, he's been through everything. He's, he was born into slavery. He was living on straw, probably. Um, he was part of the Exodus. How awesome is that? He spent 40 years in the wilderness, but not only did he spend 40 years in the wilderness, he was also one, I think, that God declared that um, anyone over 20 as a, as a soldier wasn't going to see the promised land as agreed and that they weren't going to make it because they the, the were meandering for so long. And yet God allowed him to continue. He had a great pal in um, Caleb. Um, he accompanied Moses. So not only did he know Moses, but he accompanied Moses up partially up Mount Sinai, um, and and he was part of the, the God's law. He, he was privy to the covenant. Um, he was witness to countless miracles. I mean, it, it, it's it's endless. Um, he led two million people. So when god reminded him that moses was dead and he had huge boots to fill he, you know he 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 did it he got and he and he helped and he led two million people across to the promised land he got to see the promised land um he was part of the battle of jericho marching around the wall i mean that's just crazy and yet it, and god god blessed it um I went on to think of him as like the bare grills of his day because he lived in the wilderness for 40 years. Yes, he had manna from heaven, but he still lived in the water, wilderness and survived. Um, and reflecting on D-Day, and no disrespect to, to the, the amazing sacrifices that went, went on in June 1944, June the 6th, but this guy saw the real D-Day because he had you know, they referred to d-day as the longest day but he had the longest day because the sun stopped he asked god to stop the sun and the moon and 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 it happened and he had the longest day so he could finish the battle so that's the kind of favor that this guy had and and for me it was amazing so to, to, this guy has, has really brought me back from the brink if you like um and, and I've written down some, there's lots more there, but I've written down some, some key scripture from Joshua that's really spoken to me. Uh, one is Joshua 1, 9, when he says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, um, do not be discouraged, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I kind of needed that a bit today, so I'll touch on this, if you'll be honest. Uh, Joshua 23, 14, when he's getting ready to die, uh, Joshua. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know, with all your heart and soul, that not one of all the good promises that the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. I mean, how awesome is that? That's, that's incredible. Um, and in Joshua 24, 15, Worship the Lord, obey him, and always be faithful. They're the keys. So I'm kind of finding keys and finding myself getting back into the will and the purpose of God. Um, and, and that is a cause for celebration. You know, there, there, are, there are many people out there suffering right now. I know that as well. Um, 
and and you know we're all feeling it and I, this stuff that was going on that's a challenge every day here but i feel like i'm i'm getting my flavor my my uh, zeal back um and and if that has encouraged someone today i really hope it has to to um, to maybe do what i've done and and uh and put put yourself out there and and um and just share you know so uh and finally hopefully something's going to come up on the screen in a second is to take the time to meditate on these promises because this is wrapping it all up is that there are so many promises that god has given us um now you'll see in um hopefully if it comes up on the screen i'm not sure if it will do um if not, I'll have to get it maybe passed down the line later on. But th there are promises and it's backed up with scripture and it goes on to be forgiven. Oh, there it is, there it's there. And you'll see the uh, the scriptures there, which I've only just started to, to come across and read those scriptures anyway. Um, but there's some great points there. For, of, of all places, I found that in LinkedIn. Can you believe that? You know, this kind of business related model of a platform. And there's some great work that's going on there and people are putting stuff out there and it's getting noticed but the promises to you and to me and to all of us is that you are forgiven you are free you have hope you are gifted you have purpose you are valuable and you are blessed i mean what's not to like there um so i've been blessed that yes i've got some help um, I've been blessed as well that I um, managed to find a, a character that I could just be inspired by, no more than that. And it's allowed me to kind of get back in and, and um, uh, start enjoying life again a little bit more, you know. So um, I hope that maybe this has uh, spoken to someone today. Um, and, and, and I do pray for everyone. And if that's okay with pastor, I'm just gonna finish by praying um, and pass back. And to thank you very much, as much as I probably was a little bit nervous about doing this, I actually have genuinely enjoyed it. And I hope you have too as well. So I'm just gonna pray, Lord, I give thanks to you. I give you glory. I thank you that you're the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. I thank you that you're the God that wants the best for us, that you won't give up on us. You continue to shape and mould us. You see us as the finished article, even though sometimes we don't. And I pray that anyone out there who maybe just needs a leg up or some help, Lord, that you would speak to their heart and provide a way when it would, would seem there isn't any way. Um, and Lord, I just thank you that as you continue to bless us, Lord. So. I give you praise and glory and honour in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.